Good morning, Pastor John Davis of the Amityville Community Church. Let's ask the living God to bless our time in prayer. Father God, we do want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, your kindness, your your, your love for us. We ask that as we look into your word, you would inspire us. You would remind us of what a great God you are and what a great gospel we have and what a great book this Bible is. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning again. And I'd like to at least uh, today discuss a man named Mordecai. You will find it. You'll see it's continuing in our faith series. If you go on the uh, channel and please feel free to pass these on to others. If you go on to the YouTube channel, as it were, um, we have a series of faith. And as the Lord leads, I will add different excerpts, presentations. Today, we're going to talk about Mordecai. Several weeks ago, we did a presentation on Esther, when father and mother die, when father and mother die. And, and, and it was about Esther's life. And it showed that when your father and mother die, Hope does not die. Grace does not die. Mercy does not die. Your future, future optimism does not have to die. And so we now come to this gentleman, Esther. And this is very important. I I want to at least begin with this. So in Esther chapter 2, verse 7, this is what it says. And Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful. When her father and mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. Now I bring that up because Esther goes on to become the queen of Persia, delivers the Jews. But what made her this way was that she had someone in her life to speak boldness, to speak courage, to speak faith. I want to at least talk about Mordecai today. And first, I would like to say that many of us, we need to actively, let me say this again. Many of us, we need to actively look for people who, when we speak to them, we feel challenged. We feel provoked to godliness and good works. Oh, yes. Many of us, we do not want to be challenged. We want people to just kind of validate and to reaffirm our personal mediocrity. You heard that. I say this with love and respect. I'll use my own personal example. I I grew up in the Bronx, lived down the block from a gentleman. And at a a point in my life, anybody who knows me knows I like to eat. But this, this gentleman, this friend, when I was in middle school, used to invite me to his basement every night to work out with him. I I looked back at that as a real time of just understanding what friendship is, that people could see you, but they don't want to encourage you. Now, again, people will encourage us, but if we're resistant, if we're stubborn, if we, you know, we can put up a wall where people realize that we can't speak. So that's a, a real point that I'd like to bring up with Mordecai and Esther. Mordecai did not allow Esther, let me say this again, Mordecai did not allow Esther to wallow in self-pity about the death of her parents, but no doubt Mordecai had reminded Esther that God is on the throne. It wasn't just that Esther knew this, Mordecai had reminded Esther that God was on the throne and Esther was still alive and that now God was going to use Esther. We need somebody in our life. Some of us, we wake up, we surf the internet, Google some things, and we think we've done something for the day. Oh, it was a productive day. Some of us, if we've read Bible and prayed, now we think we've really done something. We need people to speak into our life. Possibility. We need people to speak into our life change. We need people to speak into our life boldness. We need people to speak into our life the the faith that changes the world around us. And when the world around us doesn't mean it may be a planetary change, but we are not just simply, this is a great time to look at this. We have individuals You you hear this about the frontline workers, the frontline workers. 
that they're working in this time of pandemic and they're risking their lives for others. What, what I fear is that many in the church today, we're so busy huddled in our homes. There are people, I have a, a friend of mine, he, he works, he works, he goes around and he fixes computers, ATM machines, and he said he met somebody and he met somebody who was just coming out of their house in September for the first time just coming out of their house in September for the first time. And I thought to myself, as I always, I say regularly from the pulpit when I preach, we all will have to figure this out for themselves, for ourselves. We all have to find our path in life. It's intriguing because Mordecai spoke to Esther in such a way. And the end of it, of course, is Esther's willing to risk her life for her people. But we need somebody who's going to challenge us, who's going to remind us that life is not just about self-preservation. We need somebody who, who speaks into our life that life is about serving the living God in a very vibrant, in a, in a, in a very powerful, in an enthusiastic way that faith is not just self-preservation. So, so important to understand that. I can't overstate that. We want people in our life who are going to challenge us, who are going to raise our mind and our hearts to think about God, about our lives in, in new ways that provoke us to godliness and good work. Some of us, if any, let me, let me express it this way. Sometimes people could tell us when we challenge them, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what it's like. And I respond to them, you're absolutely right. I don't know, but Jesus knows. Amen. And Jesus commands certain things in our life. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus commands certain things in our life. And unfortunately, when we don't have Mordecai's in our life, we can become complacent. We can easily become mediocre lukewarm and we believe that our way of doing things is the only way let me say it better we think the way that is most comfortable for us we don't even embrace challenge look at i want you to look at esther chapter 2 for a moment just a a quick look at mordecai's character so what happens is here we read this verse chapter 2 verse 21 this is about Mordecai now. In those days, while Mordecai sat within the king's gate, two of the king's units, Bigthan and Teresh, doorkeepers, became furious and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. So the matter became known to Mordecai, who told Queen Esther, and Esther informed the king in Mordecai's name. And when an inquiry, inquiry was made into the matter, it was confirmed, and both were hanged on a gallows, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. Mordecai sat in the king's gate. But Mordecai found out about this plot to assassinate the king. Some of us, we will find out about injustice. We will find out about the, the, the possibility of danger to others. And we just don't get involved. We, we can start to become so self-absorbed that we are not thinking about anyone else except our families, our little circle of friends. We, 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 our hearts start to shrink. Mordecai was willing to obviously risk his position in the king's gate to expose this plot. Whenever we expose something, we don't know how it's going to turn out. Mordecai didn't know if, if somehow it would backfire and they would lie on him, but it worked out in this case. But all that to say, Mordecai was a person who when he saw injustice, when he saw that something was amiss, he got involved. I, I want to just at least say that. Don't want to go into all of the technical aspects, but we want to, we understand that faith is not about self-preservation. Mordecai had spoken to Esther's life in such a way that she's going to deliver the Jewish people eventually. 
I want to say this about Mordecai. We need Mordecais in our life. We need people to speak into our life challenge, change, conviction. We need people to speak power into our life, boldness into our life. You go on and we'll read the, the statement that Esther makes. So what happens is that, and this man Mordecai, this is a powerful faith. I, I, I want to show you, I have to go back to one more passage here. Look at, I want you to go back to Esther chapter 3. So in Esther chapter 3, after these things, Esther chapter 3 verse 1, after these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. Now notice, Mordecai had just saved the king's life. He's not promoted. But that doesn't sway Mordecai. Some of us, when we're not recognized, we, we, we're easily discouraged. Mordecai has, a, has a, a, a personality that he does what he does because he's a man of conviction. He does what he does because he's a man of, of, of truth. He's a man of, of, of boldness. He's not a man who needs recognition. But verse 2, and all the king's servants who were within the king's gate, bowed and paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning him, but Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Then the king's servants who were within the king's gate said to Mordecai, why do you transgress the king's command? Now it happened when they spoke to him daily, and he would not listen to them, that they told it to Haman to see whether Mordecai's words would stand, for Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath. But he disdained to lay hands, verse 6, but he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had told him of the people of Mordecai, and said Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, the people of Mordecai. Now I'm going to just start closing this session up here. We're going to look at Mordecai a little more tomorrow or the next day. But Mordecai is in the king's gate. The king has given a command that everyone should bow in the presence of Haman. Mordecai, even though he saves the king's life, the king does not run his life to the point where he compromises his conviction. Let me say that again. The king does not run Mordecai's life to the place where he compromises his convictions. Mordecai is an individual who is willing to risk his life for his convictions, who's willing to risk imprisonment for his convictions, and obviously he's willing to risk the king's wrath for his convictions. This is a spirit that he puts into Esther. This is a spirit that he speaks into Esther's life in such a way that eventually she is willing to die for her own convictions in the presence of the king. I say that because in this particular era of fear. It is an era of fear. How do we know that? You could call it common sense. I'm not saying you should not wear a mask, but we, we clearly have now, some people have huddled up in such a way, they no longer go to church. They no longer fellowship with believers. They no longer, there was, there are people who don't even hug and kiss their family members anymore. We all will figure this out for ourselves. I want to tell you this. I know this is not going to be received by all people. The gospel is not received by all people. We see that we live in a, as we like to call it, a partisan society. Not everything is received by all people, but we need people. We need Mordecai's to speak into our life courage to understand that our purpose on this planet is not self-preservation. Our purpose is to influence society 
for the kingdom of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to influence society in such a way that people will know that the faith of Jesus resides in us to the place that we are not primarily concerned about self-preservation, but we are pro primarily concerned about the well-being of others and promoting the gospel in the life of others. We need a Mordecai in our life. Let me say this again. Not all will receive this. This is clear. This is clear. There are some of us who no matter what evidence is pre presented to us, we will shrink back and we will, be, we will just convince ourselves that our way of thinking is proper. Mordecai raised Esther in such a way that she was bold and courageous. Where did this, this Esther come from? Where did this faith in Esther come from? That even when her mother and father died, she went on to, to become the queen of Persia from a man named Mordecai. We need people. And, and let me say this. We want to speak into people's life change. We want to speak into people's life boldness. We want to speak into people's life power that you could do anything. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and I say that, that we please understand, surround yourself, not with people who you could hear some people, all they talk about now is this, this pandemic or politics. But, but we want people who remind us that our individual lives change, growth, maturity, progress, forward movement in our character, in our mind, in our heart. We need a Mordecai. We need people who speak into our lives the faith of the living God. What a great man Mordecai is. And hopefully we can speak that into the life of others. We need them in our life, but we want to pass it on. We want to speak into the life of people that this life is more than just getting a job, paying the bills, and keeping ourselves safe. Who knows what God will do in an individual when self-preservation takes a back seat to faith? Let me say that one more time. Who knows what God will do in an individual when self-preservation and the concern of health takes a back seat to faith and going forward in God's kingdom. I pray you're encouraged by this. It's, it, it's just that you, you look at how Mordecai raised Esther. What a, what a woman she was. What a woman she was that even after she became queen, she was willing to, willing to risk her royal position for the good of others. That comes from Mordecai. He speaks this, this, this life-changing faith into his, as it were, daughter through providence. I like that term, daughter through providence. May God put into our lives people who speak and provoke challenge and change for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.